Hey guys, how are you doing? I hope you're all doing well. Thanks for being here. Just as things were becoming insufferably boring in the foodie verse, some drama pops off. There's a lot I want to talk about. I'll put timestamps and try to make this somewhat organized and cohesive. I want pizza, baby. Chantel is really becoming depressing to watch or make content about. I like to have a good time on here, laugh, keep things lighthearted and fun. I find myself becoming less and less interested because not only is her content drier than Amberlynn's chicken, Chantel just seems to have completely given up on her health. Her blood sugar is still out of control, yet every day she is eating huge, high-carb meals and still drinking fruit juice. She's back to smoking shisha during her streams. It's clear that food is the only thing she really cares about. There have been a lot of moments in her recent live streams that sound like she has given up. She is already giving herself excuses to eat whatever she wants during Ramadan. Diabetics are exempt. Well, that's the, like if you're type one and your blood sugar drops a lot, I would say yes, you're exempt. If you have a, a even if with binge eating disorder, you would be exempt because if it triggers binges for you by fasting, then you know I, God would understand that. But for me, I did it last Ramadan, so I'm gonna be okay because I know I can still eat iftar, and by the time I get hungry later in the day and I'm already starting to make the iftar and then I can eat by like six or so, you know? People have been noticing the decline in her eyesight, likely from diabetic retinopathy. She recently had a moment that I thought was very concerning. Oh, my eyeball hurts me. Yikes, squirrel. Ever since her back injury, she looks extra miserable walking around. When she first went back to Kuwait after Poopgate, she seemed kind of motivated to go for walks, but I think that's done for good. She's had so many wake-up calls in recent years, the type of wake-up calls that often motivate people to make changes before it's too late. Chantel is so obsessed with food and refuses to make herself the least bit uncomfortable in order to make changes that I think she's not even going to bother pretending to do better anymore. Things might start getting pretty grim. Part of me wonders if the strong push for her goal of 100,000 subscribers was so she could feel like she accomplished something before she leaves Earth. Speaking of the push for 100,000... I want cream cheese, baby. Chantel mentioned in a live stream that one of her goals for 2024 was to hit 100,000 subscribers and receive the silver YouTube play button. For a few weeks, people have been noticing her subscriber count going up, but it doesn't reflect in her view count. At first, she gave us the story that it must be the haters buying subs for her, which is ridiculous. It turns out that with Salah's help, she's been networking with an Arabic channel to gain those subscribers. Mo Translates on Twitter has done a wonderful job translating and archiving this. She also has a YouTube channel but hasn't posted a video in a long time. I will link one of her videos in the description in case you'd like to check her out and show your appreciation for her work by giving her a view or a super thanks. I will read out her tweets regarding this situation before I get back to Chantal's content. Mo says, thanks to Racks and Dolls and Two-Tailed Caperer, which by the way, Two-Tailed Caperer has a YouTube channel and he makes really funny parody songs, so check him out. They found the Arabic channel, Takat55555, where Chantal's new subs are from. I'm listening to a live stream now, and they give each other subs from each other. Some of them sub from more than one account. It's all about getting likes and subs. I'm still listening to the live stream. It sounds like, quote, you can win gifts or giveaways, and those gifts are subs or 50 subs. The Takat woman keeps saying she can send them from her server. I don't know what that means. Based on what this Takat woman is saying, you can also buy likes, subs, or views. You can pay her and ask her for any of these things. It's like she connects groups of people to channels and specifies what this person wants. I don't know if these are legit accounts or what. Anyways, the Takat woman has someone's channel up on the screen and keeps refreshing it and keeps saying, come on, people, keep subbing. Also, I have no idea why this Takat woman has so many mods on her channel. Chantel made it seem like she is becoming known among Arabic viewers, but really she joined a sub for sub party. You go girl, break that terms of service. Chantel is fake and a scammer and hasn't changed at all. And this is a screenshot from YouTube's terms of service that says, offering to subscribe to another creator's channel solely in exchange for them subscribing to your channel, also known as sub for sub, is not allowed. Creators who offer such exchanges risk losing subscriber numbers, receiving a terms of use strike, or even having their channel terminated. I guess she doesn't understand that when you invite new audience, they can still talk shit in Arabic. This woman is nice to her in English, but then made this comment below. Salah was modding for Chantal that day, last Saturday, and didn't delete the comment. He just left it there. 
And the comment this person left in Arabic says, Salah is only with her for the Canadian citizenship. And then this person left a comment on Chantel's video saying, You are so productive, mashallah. I'm proud of the progress you are making on your wellness journey. Sometimes people write in Arabic using English letters. This is an informal way of writing the language on social media. So that's what you're looking at here in the screenshot. Just to clarify, Salah was responding here to someone named Ma'ala, but he must have seen this comment by Malika because he was addressing everyone in the chat. This is from a February 21st live stream on Takat's channel. Chantal was asking for sub for sub. It seems to me that the Takat woman already knew who Chantal was when she got the super chat, so I wonder if Chantal had contacted her WhatsApp. I included screenshots, clips, and translations. So for these videos that Mo posted, I'll just read out what they say since Takat is speaking in Arabic. Chantel sends Takat a $2 super chat that says, A gift from me to you. Thanks everyone for welcoming me. Hello everyone. Takat replies, Oh wow, you should have done the super chat in Kuwaiti Dinar. Takat says, God bless you, Miriam, and then reads her super chat. Takat says, God bless you, Miriam. Thank you so much for the super chat. Chantel says, You welcome, Habibti. Takat says, thank you so much, Miriam. God bless you, my dear. Miriam, don't forget to leave me a comment on the forum. I am going to give you a gift, implying that the gift may be subscribers. Chantel says, please leave me comments on my videos and I will do the same for all of you. Takat says, Miriam, please don't forget to leave me a comment on the forum. Chantel says, I left you a comment there a while ago. Chantal says, I can't translate too much. Please leave me comments on my videos and I will support you all back. I need 800 subscribers to reach 100,000. Takat says, someone get me the link to Everyday Miriam's channel. Please get me her link. That's the least we can do to help her out. Please get me the link to her channel so we can pin it in the chat and everyone can subscribe to her. And then the channel was pinned to the chat. Someone said, Everyday Miriam is clever. Takat says, I understood her intentions, Sarah, as soon as she joined us. She wants us to get her to 100,000 subscribers. Hopefully we will get her to 100,000 subscribers. People are saying they are subscribing. Takat says, good job, everyone. Please subscribe to our sister Miriam's channel. Miriam is almost at 100,000 subscribers. She wants the YouTube plaque. She really wants the YouTube plaque. Miriam, just so you know, I also subscribed to your channel and turned on the notifications so we can stay in touch. And then she puts Chantel's channel on the screen. Wow, everyday Miriam is so beautiful. She is Canadian, married to a Syrian, and now lives in Kuwait. People are saying they are subscribing, and Takat says, Good job, everyone. Let's make her happy. Miriam is counting on all her Arab, Muslim, Egyptian brothers and sisters to help her out. Good job, everyone. Let's support her since she is supporting us, too. Chantal says, Thank you all from the bottom of my heart for your support. I am so blessed to be Muslim. I am so grateful for Islam. Please leave me comments on my videos and I will support you back. Welcome to all my new subscribers. I will subscribe back to you all. The woman who runs this channel is so sweet and so is everyone else here. Takat says, thank you so much, Miriam. You are so sweet and so beautiful. When I'm saying Chantal is replying, I guess really it's Salah because it's in Arabic. So I don't know if Chantal was sitting there telling him what to type or if he's just doing this on his own. I even wonder if this was his idea. But anyway... In the next tweet, someone asks about this. They say, who do you think is writing those comments from Chantel? Are they tonally correct or more just Google Translate and hope for the best? Mo says, sometimes I think it's Salah, but who knows, it could be someone else. Google Translate has gotten better with translations over time. Sometimes I can still tell when it's straight from Google Translate, but with Chantel, I think someone is helping her. This is from one of Chantel's recent live streams. Mo says, Taka is currently in Chantel's chat. Takat said, Sister Miriam, I'm getting exposed to a lot of hate. It's really bad. So many people are reporting my channel for supporting you. Chantal responded to her saying, I don't speak Arabic. Then Mo says, I think Chantal got Salah to respond to Takat in Arabic. Salah slash Chantal. Takat, I have a lot of haters who hate me and Islam, my religion. They make fun of me and my religion all the time. I will always support you and stand by your side. Mo was then watching one of Takat's live streams and she says, I will tweet highlights of what Takat is saying. She was having a horrible day because of Chantel yesterday. She was getting a lot of hate. She said she saw Chantel was live, so she went in her live stream. Takat was so shocked by the massive amount of food Chantel was eating. Takat was feeling down yesterday because she supported Miriam and got hate. She said she chose not to go live yesterday just to collect herself and gather her thoughts. Takat gave people instructions to unsubscribe from Chantel and people were asking her to tell them how to block her. 
Zakat is saying Miriam is not her friend. She doesn't know her. Miriam showed up to her channel last week asking her to get her subscribers count up to 100,000. So she tried to help Miriam and then it turned into a disaster. In the beginning of this live stream, it sounded like people already knew what was happening with Takat. I think she messaged some people yesterday to tell them about the comments she was going on on her channel about Miriam. Takat is making sure everyone unsubscribes from Miriam. At one point, Takat said an expression in Arabic equivalent to, God damn you, Miriam, God damn you. By the way, about my first tweet in this thread, it was funny when Takat said in shock, I went in on Miriam's live stream only to find her eating a whole pot of food by herself, and then she laughed. Clearly, Takat and her audience didn't like Miriam's gluttony. I don't know if this is related to Miriam slash Chantel or just a coincidence, but someone in Takat's chat made a comment about the dangers of people who are two-faced. Takat acknowledged the comment and agreed with her. Takat notices there are people in her live stream who are not members, and she knows they must be here because of Miriam. Someone in the chat says, Miriam doesn't deserve her name. It's too good for her, and Takat agrees. Takat says again, God damn you, Miriam. God damn you. Curse you, Miriam. Takat starts choking, goes to drink water, and comes back and resumes, God damn you, Miriam. Curse you. Just to be clear, while Takat is saying, God damn you, and curse you, she is laughing it off. They are laughing it off together and wishing the bad or evil eye to keep away from them. I will end the thread here. If anything else is worth adding, I will tweet about it and let you know. Thank you. I want soda pop, baby. Even after all that proof, Chantel is still denying that she participated in a sub-for-sub -sub situation type deal. Before we get into her multiple personality meatball mukbang stream, here are some quick clips from the stream before that where she says there's nothing wrong with doing a sub-for-sub. Welcome, new beezers. Ready, sit? Bees. <laughs> Did you know that Bee loves life? She has millions of subscribers. She built her channel, like, grew her channel by doing sub for sub, apparently. Sub for sub is against terms of service. I don't see why you can't support each other. Maybe if you're doing it, like, in a shady way, you know? But I don't see why you can't just go and, like, hang out with people in a chat and be like, sub to my channel, I'll support your channel. Like, why not, you know? Why would they want to discourage people sharing, you know? I could see if it's like, I don't know what, how it would be. I don't know. I really don't know, Messi. Do you have any hidden talents? Um, if I do, they're still hidden. I don't know about them. <laughs> it's hard being an icon. <laughs> I'm not an icon anymore. I'm not Foodie Beauty. She continues that sentiment in the next stream. She claims she is a different person now. Foodie beauty is no more. She's trying so hard to pretend she's a different person that from stream to stream, it almost seems like she actually has multiple personalities. Your opinions are like farts. Dust in the wind, baby, dust in the wind. Takat. Um, I don't know if you're going to understand me, Takat. I, don't, I can't say it in Arabic, but um, I have a lot of haters. And it's unfortunate that they literally have no life and they have to dig and try to destroy like smaller channels and people. But I do support you and I stand by your side. If there's anything I can do for you, I will definitely do it. Um, I don't see why YouTube would delete a channel like for supporting other people. Just like it's not doing it for any deceptive purposes. It's just literally supporting other people, like trying to grow your channel and have new viewers and different things like that. So I find that really, really sad. Um, and I really hope that nothing happens to your channel, inshallah. And yeah, I have a lot of um, crappy, mean-spirited people who follow me and they try to try to ruin anything I do, unfortunately. And yeah, that's I don't know what to do about that, you know? So hold on a second. I wanna see if, if Salah can type in Arabic. Well, Murderino, I have a bit of a messy past, but not probably, I mean, a lot of people who judge me have a worse past and, you know, they want to just keep digging and keep trying to bring me down with that and it's not going to work. So they try anything, even going after innocent people, you know, whatever. So that's fine. I mean, I maybe gained like six or seven at the max, maybe like 10 subscribers from going into people's chats and introducing myself and like talking to people. I want to try to get more Arabic people in my audience and stuff like that. Not just Arabic, but like people from around the world, you know? And people who generally want to watch my content. But that's the only amount of subs I've gained from that. I didn't gain that much, you know? 
So everyone has a past, no one's perfect. Yeah, I know. People can just keep like ruminating over it all they want. I don't really care. Takat, if you're still here, um, someone's going to write in Arabic for you. <laughs> I don't know why people have to go after like innocent people or people who, you know, like <clears throat> someone will go there and be like, stay away from Chantal. She's bad news. Uh, or her, stay away from Chantal. She'll bring your channel down. Yeah, because of people like you going there and reporting her. Like, <laughs> what does that have to do with me? Like, I'm not responsible for my trolls. Um, but anyway, that's all I'm going to say about it. That's it. That's all. <laughs> If people want to keep ruminating over somebody I'm not even anymore, so it's completely irrelevant what you say, then that's fine. Like, I have a past. I don't think that I've done anything super horrible. And whatever I have, it's between me and God, not between me and haters. And um, I'm just working on developing, you know, learning from the past and trying to just become a better person every day, you know? Well, that's the thing you got to take with being on the internet, I guess. Like, you know, haters going to hate, whatever. <clears throat> nothing I can do so I don't worry about it anymore people are stuck in the past because that's where they made their big coin off of my life right you know like people want a train wreck people that's what they want and it's like that's just not my life anymore you know um, it's boring and I like that it's peaceful and um, it's completely taking a different direction and than what people thought that it would ever go you know people wanted me to stay down they wanted me to stay high they wanted me to stay miserable they wanted me to stay in an abusive relationship they wanted me to be just really down and that's not how it's ever going to be any ever again so i mean in god's will so now they're going after someone else's channel you know or people who support me and it's like why you know it's just so ridiculous and like i said it's not from a sub for sub thing to be 100k because i literally didn't get very many subs from that if you look at how many subs watch these these other channels it's not thousands you know so um yeah i just thought it'd be interesting to you know um just try to branch out a little bit you know and get people from all over the world would be nice but i don't know <laughs> honestly at first i was like i thought it was like somebody bought them because i was like there's no way you know and then i even i'm like i checked salah's bank statements i'm like did you buy like i was in disbelief so i don't know but then do i do see a lot of comments from people who are new and i do see that you know the views have gone up a little bit and then also that like the the suffer th sub thing it's not just it wasn't about suffer sub for me it was about gaining a new community of support like new people you know and also doing that i also love to support smaller channels i've always done that i've always been somebody who if i see you come in here and you have a channel like um i usually go and subscribe to your channel and i comment and i you know i don't think there's anything wrong with that in my opinion if you want to support smaller creators so i'm trying to support and other people are trying to bring it down so that's not on me that's not my doing i'm not a bad person like that so there's a lot of you guys who have who have channels that i'm subscribed to actually even though i don't always comment you know yeah i mean anyone can turn their life around though that's the thing heck if i can do it you know and my life is not perfect life is never going to be perfect you know like it's never it's not meant to be like it can't be it's impossible it's not but for some things i'm a lot better than before and yeah that's i mean you know Yes, Dime, I am very happy about the 100k, but I'm not going to um, be like, woohoo, woohoo, because you know what? I know the evil eyes on me, so. That's exactly what I thought. Like, people to buy, I thought that, like, haters bought the, like, bots or something, bot subscribers to try to, you know, take down my channel or cause drama or stuff like that. So I, you know, messaged YouTube and I was like, I was concerned about that because it wasn't me. And um, they were like, oh, don't worry about it. Like, I even have the conversation just in case. They're like, don't worry about it, you know, you... If, if that's the case, then um, they would just delete them if they're not real or something. I don't know. I don't know, Zam. I don't know where they came from, but it wasn't me. And at least, like, yeah, I've, you know, asked, like, basically supported smaller channels and they support me, blah, blah, blah. But it was only, like, a few. <laughs> I guess I'm just not excited because I think that any minute they can be taken away because I don't know where they're coming from. I don't know, you know. I seriously, I'm just so weirded out. Like, what the heck? I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Like, would changing my channel name have anything to do with that? I'm not sure. I don't watch or listen to anything that people say about me. I just don't care. Thank you for the keeping me relevant, and that's it. But actually, they're keeping, like, an old part of me. Like, that's what they want. Keep an old part relevant. That's not relevant anymore. Like, anything to do with that is not relevant anymore. Anything to do with my past. Um, going back into, like, five, four, three, even two years ago, it doesn't matter now. Because it's it's only helped shape me into a better person, obviously. The fajita? Seemed very, I seem very upset. 
no I wasn't upset I'm just calm now guys like I'm just you know at a point where I'm just not my emotions I'm trying not to let my emotions go from one end to the other you know I'm just like baseline I'm not trying to prove anything AR I'm not trying to like um, live my life with haters in mind you know at all so I, I don't think that like number one why would anyone get hate for having an eating disorder that's just so stupid and ableist to begin with she's living in Kuwait why would he want citizenship exactly people will say well oh well she can't bring him to Canada she doesn't have money so then why is he with me if that's what you think his motives are <laughs> you know with no foreseeable future of going to Canada so what's the deal then 20 years of therapy to overcome your binge eating I know a lot of people who overcame binge eating without therapy though too I'm not saying that I don't need any specifically I don't know but yeah I know people want to see me get healthy and everything and do better but you can't bully somebody into changing like it doesn't work that way people will change when they're ready to change and if they don't they don't it's their life to live I feel rich already honestly the best thing I ever did was reverting to Islam it's just taught me a lot about like this life and how everything is just like an illusion of happiness you know the more the more that you attach yourself to things in life um, and keep your focus away from God and the afterlife the more you're gonna have your heart broken in this life the more you look forward to things that you might not get the more you put hope into anything other than you know developing your character your spiritual character your relationship with God the more things are gonna break your heart you know Sweaty, I don't plan on watching. I don't know why people think this this documentary, whatever you're talking about, is a holy grail. I have no idea why I would care about that. I will not be watching anything about me ever again. It's been wonderful. Um, not engaging in any negativity or any kind of just whatever. Anything about my past, it's irrelevant to my life now. I've moved on from it, so why would I want to go back? I want to make shisha, which is still a bad habit I have, I know. <sighs> it's hard to kick everything. So, but that's, again, that's between me and myself and god and that's it so sweet that it does not seem to bother your husband how much food you eat um i don't i don't say if it bothers him or not i mean just i don't know why people would think it doesn't maybe it does maybe it doesn't i don't talk about it i don't talk about his thoughts about me or anything about our relationship shannon <laughs> it's very personal you know for all anyone knows we could have conversations about it every day nobody lives with us i used to like see what people would say about me i used to engage and be negative and now it's just like I come off here, I turn it off, it's gone. I don't watch, I don't, it's just like, whatever. I can move on with my life. I don't have to, you know, it's in my control to not pay attention to it. And that was a mistake I've always made, you know, but not anymore. <laughs> you can't be constantly critiquing someone over the same thing over and over. They just get depressed and do it more. Yeah, exactly. Are you afraid of death? Yeah, I'm a little afraid of death, but less so now that I have faith for sure, yeah. I wasn't begging anybody for subs. I wasn't saying, please sub to me, please, please. So whatever, I don't care. I know people want this to be like drama and tea, but it's not going to go anywhere. Sorry to tell you. So do whatever you want. I don't give a crap. <laughs> I never will. I don't care what you people think or say or do. There's nothing you can do to me at all. You've done the worst. There's nothing you can do at this point to bring me down. It's not going to work. So in those chats, I maybe made like seven, maybe seven to 10 new subscribers. So that's, yeah. A <laughs> hundred K cake. I got a cake when I got unbanned. Nice make a hundred K cake. I don't have any of the ingredients. I'm not a good baker. Um, I don't know Melly about the plaque. I'm not sure how it works and everything. I have to like, I think they just like reach out to you. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just going to wait a while and chill out and see if I never get it, whatever. I'm not, like I said, I don't attach myself to things or put hope in things that are just not meant for me or material things, you know, but the pizza has been running when I was saying you told her. Hmm. I did, uh, we did check in with each other a couple days ago. We did text short uh, a little bit a couple days ago um you know, just seeing how she's doing and uh yeah her back pain is pretty bad but healthcare is expensive and healthcare is expensive over there so it is very likely that her weight is uh, a big part of what is causing her health issues oh whatever that's fine brenda some things are expensive some things are cheap even if you're an expat just depends like obviously you Canada it's like universal right it's not like that here it's like you have some things covered for a good price some things no pizza's more loyal to Chantal than most family members are to each other yeah people are just trying to make drama it's just not gonna whatever it's not gonna fly like the more you don't give people reactions the more they try harder to get one it's just not gonna work oh my eyeball it hurts me I'm not gonna turn against pizza so just forget it yeah I don't care like even if I never get one I don't really care honestly I don't 
it's my just attitude like whatever <laughs> you know at least yeah i'm happy to have them of course it's like a milestone for me even without a plaque you know yeah apparently like youtube told me that like if there's any like bots or dead subs in that they clean them out but i was seriously just super surprised that my channel was growing so fast i have no idea how i really don't i didn't buy a single sub <laughs> like at all i never i don't believe in that buying subs at all I believe in supporting other channels. I heard B Love B Loves Life. She has millions of subscribers. I remember when her channel was first growing, she admitted to doing sub for subs. Like her video might even still be up there. She did this sub for sub thing. And me, it's not about sub for sub. I don't like people subbing just for the sake of it. I think like people, I want new people to engage with each other, you know, and support each other and genuinely like the content that they're watching, you know? And I like to do that. I, like, I also like supporting smaller channels. I'm not always going to be like bubbly. You have to remember like when I was back in Canada, I was high 90% of the time, not maybe 98% of the time. So now I'm not on anything and I'm just more clear headed and more um, just different. <laughs> you know, my life is different. Okay, I'll be right back. I'm just uh, gonna get my sheesh. I don't wanna like, I don't wanna show. <laughs> oh, yeah. Who's I'm getting old. I'm getting old. So I guess like, I just used to be naturally kind of weird and I mean I still am like my sense of humor and stuff a lot but I don't know a lot of ways I've changed on a weight loss journey I'm on a journey that's for sure and hopefully it involves weight loss that's so someday when I can get my stuff together it's smoking I know Malika I smoke I mean, you know it's a bad habit I just can't kick anyways Malika I'm planning on quitting shisha for uh, Ramadan anyways I don't know how I'm ever gonna give up shisha it's so good Hungry fat chick seems to be having a really hard time. She said if food killed her, good, and it broke my heart. Yeah, that's sad. I know. Sometimes, like, so, like you're, a, like, that's what eating disorders do in food addiction. It tricks your brain into thinking whatever, you know? Like, just be comfortable like this. It doesn't, your body is working against you. It's, like, it's so hard. Like, people don't understand unless they have it. Yeah, healthy, I definitely feel unhealthy. That's the main reason I want to lose weight. I never, like, look at myself and my body and say, I hate you for the way you look. You know, I'm not like that. I don't have that self-hatred. But I do want to lose the weight for my health. If I look at myself, I think you're so unhealthy. Like that's that that right there is why I'm disappointed in myself. Even part of me today still craves that those wheelchair gummies, but it's never enough. You're always chasing the dragon. Like you're always like I, I like one time what I ate like two thousand milligrams and it was not enough for me. You know, like that's that's not healthy. That's that's just bad. Have I lost sensation? A little bit. I it's like it's it's kind of numb and like in some parts, yeah. I think I'm just fed up with professional help because I've been through so much of it, you know, and I don't know, diabetic neuropathy. I don't know. I think it's, um, it might be a combination, but I mean, I think it's definitely something like sciatic related because like, because of the way it starts in my lower back and goes down my leg, which is like all the symptoms of it. I don't think I could travel 13 hours anyways. Can you imagine? It's all connected. You're nervous, you're muscular, everything is connected. What I think happened is when I was sitting on the plane for so long coming back here I could feel something change in my back it was so painful I think maybe I slipped disc or something and a lot of those times those problems resolve themselves particularly in my case I'm guessing with weight loss so I gotta do a restart how am I cheating for my silver plaque please I don't even really care about it 100k subs is cool yeah of course I want that but the plaque I don't even know if I'll even ever be able, even able to be able to get it here I never, never paid a prostitute. <laughs> Makes me laugh. Are you still working on the bankruptcy? Yep. <laughs> still working on my messy life. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't, just because I moved here doesn't mean it doesn't follow me. I still have to take care of my responsibilities. No, I said I never paid a prostitute. I mean, that's a, there's a difference. <laughs> Offering to help someone in need is different, right? I don't have any animosity feelings towards anybody, any haters. I just don't anymore. I don't care, you know? Like, life is too short to feel negative towards people, you know what I mean? And I'm a public figure, and I've been controversial in my past, and people still talk about that. But I know in my heart I'm a changed person, and I wouldn't do more than the things that I used to do. And I've learned from them, and uh, that's all I can do, you know? How do you heal the leg? I don't know. I'm going to figure it out. He said I put my sister in the dryer. It never happened. Yeah, it's full of BS. That's why I don't bother watching those things. Yeah, I know. I apparently put my... It never happened. So stupid. And I turned it on, apparently. <laughs> okay, me and my sister are so close. My sister was mentally slow. 
if I ever said anything about that, I talked about her being like premature and stuff like that, not calling her uh, mentally or ill or stuff like that. I never make fun of her. Never. Pizza's a catch. Yeah, no, he, he for her, yeah, he's really nice. Really, really nice. I know he's socially awkward, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, even, even Salasa, he's like, he's a really nice person. He is a nice person. Very. He's never, like, I don't know. He's never lied. Like, never. He's just, you know what I mean? Very honest. It's not sub for sub. It's just showing support for other channels. She's totally quitting Shisha for Ramadan and is ready to get healthy and lose weight. But if she doesn't, it's not her fault. She has an eating disorder. She didn't pay for prostitutes. She was just donating to men in need of cash and laptops in exchange for sex. Pete's never lies, except for when she was at Natter's house and would have Pete say that she was just sleeping in the other room, but that doesn't count. She would never do anything mean to her sister, except passive-aggressively shit on her to her audience. The haters don't bother her. She's not going to talk about them. She's totally emotionally stable and isn't going to watch that documentary. Then a couple hours later, she fires up another stream to talk about her haters in the documentary while being emotionally unstable. I have quinoa trauma. You know what I mean? So yeah, I know I said I wasn't going to react to anything, but I feel like it's necessary to react to a few things. Um, because I was like, you know what, everyone is saying that Mr. Cardigan's fair, he does really good research. <laughs> we'll get to that in a minute. He does really good documentaries. Um, number one, Mr. Cardigan, you say that my I'm not I'm not a very good YouTuber. What about you? What about you making clout, making um, a following off of the haters and uh, off of the same two women with eating disorders? Um, what about that? Mr. Cardigan has proven himself in this part one to be nothing more than a glorified hater um, with better editing skills. Because let's face it, referencing your credible, your, his credible research is referencing Michael B. Sweaty and Mana See You Next Tuesday on Kiwi Farms, okay? Um, Kiwi Farms is a hate, a vile, racist hate forum, all right? Um, so you're going to hear these people doing this with their cars. Number one, you're not saying anything that mil like that hundreds of thousands of people have not already seen or said. You're talking about things that happened literally 20 years ago or six years ago, um, things that I've already addressed. So you're beating the dead horse to the point of it being pulp at this point. All right. So, but I want to go over a few of those things that make me a vile person. Number one thing that gets to me every time is um, putting my sister in the dryer. Listen, this Kathy friend of mine suddenly turned against me, okay? And she's psychotic. I could show you emails or messages I've had. Hi, everybody. Messages I've had from this woman. She's harassed other people like this. You didn't do your research well enough. You just take her word for it. She is vile. She is a stalker. She is like insane psychotic okay and i've been her friend for a while um you did not see the emails that she sent to me are you going to show those emails that she sent to me first harassing me every single day saying the most vile things um she hung out at my house when i was with my sister maybe two times like barely ever so i don't know how she's a credible source of information for my past um i never put my sister in a dryer prove it I never um, told her she can't sit with us, prove it. I never, ever treated her badly. So that's one person that you say I treat badly in my life that you can scratch off your list. Compared to a lot of civil rivalries I've seen in my life, mine was pretty good. Maybe she's annoyed me a few times. I was 11. Again, if you want to go back over 20 years, that's your prerogative. I don't know why people are so obsessed. If a documentary needs to be made, it needs to be the level of, of obsession with my past as a child. You know, I've seen comments, people saying her dad, this Kathy person said my dad ran. Like as if that it's my fault as a two-year-old that my dad left. Are you serious? Like, please. Again, I don't live in my past. If you have something relevant to say uh, in the recent year, go for it. I know it's going to be the scandal with Salah. Whatever. We've already worked it out. We have a right to do that. It's our marriage. Hi, teardrop. It's futile defending, but you know what? Um, that person went on Kiwi Farms as a friend, made up insane lies about me, which there's no proof of. Um, she was vile. She used to have a crush on Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold from the Columbine shootings. All right. She used to worship them. Okay. 
So before you use her as your credible source of information to dictate my morality growing up, maybe research her first. She did some very nasty stuff to her sister and her sister was a teenager and she was a teenager. So don't even go there, all right, please. But she's literally insane. Like she is, she, she also lied about me sleeping with everyone's boyfriends. No, she did that. She did that. I was seeing somebody and behind my back, she did, she did something with somebody else. Anyway, I don't wanna get into that, but she was the one who was, she's a liar basically, not credible source of information, all right? Oh yeah, the cheese graveyard. Oh yeah, I'm such a bad person for that because I was talking about a true about a true crime, you know, like Stephanie Sue does in all of her videos and she has millions of subscribers. I don't know, like what? Because I was eating cheese on Halloween, a cheese graveyard, and I wasn't disrespectful. I was talking very calmly. I didn't say, haha, those people are dead. Did I say that? No, I didn't. So how am I being disrespectful? You're listening to a literal hater. Like, it's so stupid. Number two, like, I showed dead bodies on the... They were covered in a sheet. I was showing the Nikes. And I'm sorry, but those people were part of a cult where that was what they wanted to do. So, I mean, something that happened so many years ago. I'm sorry, but I don't think it's too soon to talk about that. Yeah, it was a lot of cheese, but come on. Whatever. Like, again, going over things that were so long ago. Like, what the heck? People are allowed to change. People are allowed to be different. Um, saying that I treat everyone in my life poorly? Like, who? Pete's? Okay, yes, I did cheat on him. We worked it out. We're still good friends. So if he doesn't have a problem with it anymore, why should, like, random strangers, you don't know uh, the, the dynamic of our relationship. You don't know um, the circumstances of everything. Even going far back as saying I threw a chair out of jealousy. Who cares? How does that, like, how did I do anything different than a lot of people, you know? But like saying, for example, that I wasn't with my, I abandoned my grandmother when she was dying. I and my mother, I've said this a million times, we were the only ones there out of the entire family holding her hand to her last breath. So how did I abandon her? Never happened. Fake lies. Just because I put it out on the internet, internet doesn't mean I have to accept your abuse towards me over and over again and not ever say anything about it, you know? And it's just so stupid. Like, I don't know. What else? I'm disgusted. Oh, I farted. Sorry. Nobody ever passes wind, I guess, right? Oh, uh, okay. I mean, again, that's something that you're going to, like, be grossed out over me passing wind six years ago, like, or telling a story. The story about the, the three, the other two people. Let me tell you about that story time. They invited me. I was in Cornwall. They were in Ottawa. They paid a cab for me. And they were really nice to me on the uh, chat and everything. They saw my picture, everything. Okay. They saw what I was like. There was, they paid for me 150, 120 to 150 bucks for me to taxi to them. And then all, to me to get all the way there. And they treat me like they're snobby towards me. You know, obviously I'm going to feel a certain way about that. And I was totally normal. I didn't pass wind. I didn't act gross. I acted normal. I was actually kind of shy. We were listening to music and everything like that. And then, um, they like bought me a bunch of alcohol, like a ton of alcohol, shots, beer, whatever. And then like, at first it was okay a bit. Then near the end of the night, that's when things started getting, you know, and, um, they had no plumbing. Like, I didn't know that their, their toilet had no plumbing. They had no water. They had no toilet paper. They had no, what am I supposed to do? Like, am I villainized for not being, not being able to hold in my bodily functions? Like, please. The thing with Pete's like maybe 17 years ago that happened. So I'm not allowed to change and be a better person and make mistakes please like get a life and then making up things from this hater f former friend who made up all these lies about me where's your proof it's not a credible using kiwi farms as a credible source of information from people who literally hate my guts you don't think that they have lies to tell come on please and then the irony is that you're gonna sit there and, and call out my lies in a documentary which i haven't seen any yet by the way i haven't seen any yet so especially this kathy friend she was horrible she was harassing me every day i'm pretty sure i put her emails out there too of course no one's gonna show that no, of course not. Threatening CPS on her? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. And I'm pretty sure I apologized for that a long time ago. I never did it. I never did it. I said she, I didn't think that she should be in, you know, raising children because of her level of morality. Imagine sitting around um, being a hateful harasser and your kids are privy to this. Same thing with some of the reaction channels, saying the most disgusting things, fat shaming the same fat women online and raising children. What kind of children are you going to raise? Bullies. Hello. Where's my words, Tiny Pop, that I wasn't there for my grandmother? Where's my words that I put my sister in the dryer and treated her horribly? Where's my words on that? Hmm? Can you tell me? No, you can't. No, they're not from my mouth. My story times? Yeah, sure. But so what? What? How does my story times make me a bad person that I had to use the washroom and there was nothing to clean up with? The cheese graveyard. That was so long ago. And it, no, I'm sorry. I don't regret that. I don't regret that at all because I wasn't trying to be disrespectful. I'm telling a story about a dumb cult who did some really dumb things. And to me, I thought it was ridiculous. Like, you know, and I was just pointing out the story. I wasn't saying, oh my gosh, it's so funny. They're dead. You know, what were they offended about recently? That was such a stretch. Oh yeah. 
I apparently was laughing at the, uh, you know, when I was telling the true crime story I recently did, even though I was just laughing at the name Schneeberger. And again, you're going to like say, oh, she's disgusting. Like this, this kind of outrage is what I'm talking about. No, I never bought subs. Prove it. I never did. Not once. I could show you my bank statements. I'm a very normal person and with a past like everyone else. And I'm a different person now. I don't do those outrageous things that I've done. Everyone's done outrageous things in their past, maybe even worse than some of the story times I've told. Why don't I apologize for my wrongdoings? Like what? Like what? I'm pretty sure I have. It doesn't matter. People don't want an apology, Blue Pot. People want to keep villainizing me. Whatever. Keep beating the dead horse with my past. 17, 20, 17, six years ago. It doesn't matter. Literally. I've grown. I'm not that person. Yes, I'm still fat and I have problems with food. That doesn't make you a bad person. Being defensive when people come at you doesn't make you a bad person. How is my past vile, Susan? No, Ren. I'm pissed because it's not true. Get it right. You can think I bought subs. I don't care. I didn't and that's all I'm gonna say. If you can prove it, fine. You can't, you know why? Because it didn't happen. Just like the dryer incident, it didn't happen. But I've proved myself a lot with things. I've had receipts about my medical records that I've been in outpatient care. I showed a lot of receipts in my life. Do they get ignored? Yes. Yep, I know I've changed. I don't need to prove it to anybody. That's fine. I've never done anything like that to my sister. Never. And I think she was jealous of, you can think all you want. It doesn't make it true. You know, like people just assume like, I said, maybe like it was a bit hard to go from a single child to having, but my mother never ignored me, even though I had a sister, you know? Yeah, Mr. Snowflake puts his kids in the dryer. You put your, your, one of your relatives in the dryer. Somebody told me that it was Jimmy and saying that BB never looked comfortable on camera because he didn't want to be on camera ever. People are always like, oh, he didn't love you. He didn't love you. We were together seven years and I broke up with him. I broke up with him. So how did he escape? He would have never left, never, but we were we grew apart. There was no, like, I fell out of love. That's plain and simple how it was. And like, um, do I regret cheating? Yeah. And I've said that a million times. I live with guilt from that all the time. No, I'm not raging, but thanks for the five bucks. Showing a clip of me saying like his, his TV is too loud. Yeah, it was. I'm trying to work and earn money for us. And he doesn't even have the decency to turn the volume down on his game that he's, or his video he's been watching for hours. So I have a right to be annoyed. Like I'm trying to earn money on my video. Like that would be like me going to his pl work, uh, workplace and blaring TV so he can't concentrate. Mr. Cardigan was so serious yet. Where is Kai's documentary about her as a child trafficker neighbor? She has no personality. So no one's gonna bother doing a, a documentary on her. But yes, they forgive someone who literally is be in bed with a child, tra somebody with a legit sex offender, um, no matter how you spin it. You know, that's the past. Yeah, but you're still with this person. If some things are unforgivable, like with her own words, and, and people always say, Karate Joe, you supported Karate Joe until he, I found out what he was like. And then he did not make another appearance in my chat. Prove it. Never, not once. He was blocked that day. So no, I don't. The difference is this person is still in bed with this person. That's the difference. You guys can still try to beat up on somebody who doesn't even exist anymore. If that's what you want to do with your entertainment, salivating over, imagine your only goal in life right now, your entertainment, you get popcorn for, you sit down in your PJs, is to see someone rage. Like what kind of life are you living? I saw a reaction channel who's supposedly Muslim in there. Nice Muslim, nice Muslim you are, gossiping and backbiting on another Muslim. Gotcha. So don't ever come for my morality, ever. Oh yeah, and boozing, black facing. That's okay though, that was swept right under the rug. Shannon, modded once again by FFG, swept right under the rug. And a lot of Islamophobic people in your chat. I'm so jealous of your chat, Mr. Cardigan. Uh, Mary Ham, Islamophobic people, disgusting people in there, no thanks. You can stay over there. I would not trade my audience uh, 500 people, if I'm not on camera, sometimes less, I wouldn't trade. I would rather have 50 than 5,000 disgusting people. I checked Salah's bank statements because I was like, did you buy me subs? No, he showed me. No. So I don't know. Like, he's trying to be like soft white underbelly or something with his stupid cardigan sweater. How? how no, I wasn't racist. Oh, please. How? How was I racist? I don't care if no one believes... Who the 5,000 haters that hate no matter what I do, don't believe I'm Muslim. I don't care what grounds you have to say I'm not Muslim. Who in the right mind has the right to say that somebody doesn't believe in something? That's ridiculous. You're, you're, I don't, you're a lost cause. I don't even have words for you. I don't know like what your point, I don't know what the point is, but if you're going to like use haters from Kiwi Farms, people who um, have done worse to me, such as Kathy in my life, she used to put curses on people to try to kill them. Okay. I know part two is just going to be all about natured and it's going to be all about um, probably victim shaming as if that, you know what, Mr. Cardigan, unless you're in an abusive relationship with an abusive narcissist, you can can it. And doo doo, you can can it too, because you're going to act like we don't have video evidence of him smacking you around, you stupid idiot. Seriously, you're going to say I was manipulative. 
He's the king of manipulators. The king of manipulators. Any narcissist abuser is, okay? And I fell in the trap, sure, whatever. But looking back now, oh boy. Oh, well, you should have kept the charges on him or it didn't happen. Okay, go look up statistically how many abused women drop charges. Go look. When you have feelings for someone at the time and they make you feel bad, did you hear anything he would say to me? Anything he said to me? No, you didn't. You never heard his him trying to, you know, get in my good graces or like try to say, oh, I love you, blah, 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 to try to, you know what I mean? He was very manipulative and going from having somebody like BB to that, what the heck? I had no experiences with people like this. And at the time, of course, I didn't want to believe what he, what uh, uh, May said, you know, all I knew was there was this woman who, who, wanted to calm down and see him fly down to see him spend all that money for what his cooking so i thought she had a crush on him so many women were reaching out to him and he said it was consensual what did i know you know what i mean how do i know i wasn't there like i went home i don't even remember everything like it's so dumb to try to blame me saying oh and people are saying that i brought him women who who did i bring who did i for i didn't even know he had all these women i didn't even know he was cheating on me i was in denial for so long he lied to me about even being with Dee, Dee the whole time and then when I heard the Sam's Bar Lounge videos, I was like, okay, it's confirmed. I'm going to bat for you. I, I went to hell for this guy. And he was lying to me the whole time. And, and I was putting up with his abuse and everything. <sniffs> Goodbye. I'm, I'm whatever. People thinking I miss that loser. I'm like, do I ever talk about him? Do I ever, you know, never. I never even think about him ever. Unless it's brought up by people like reaction channels uh, who want to bring up that, that traumatic part of my life, you know? I felt bad for Dee Dee, and a part of me does, honestly, because I know what it's, I know what he's like. But at this point, she doesn't even feel bad for herself. Like, she's just like, I think she's just like him, like in a lot of ways. I don't know. She's a strange one, I'll tell you. You can go to bat for him all you want, Dee Dee. He's not going to change, and he's not worth it. You have your mother there. He's a disgusting human being. You have to support him. I know, because I had to. You're going to be miserable, and you're going to regret it one day. I know it. Now, in retrospect, yeah, I believe, I don't know. I wasn't there. But the story is a lot more plausible about me because when I reread over and over those messages, I was like, wait, you know, and then just the way he would lie about like how he just told so many lies. And my, my mistake was believing him. Yep. At the time when I had feelings for that gremlin, I was like disillusioned. I didn't care about anything. I didn't care about myself. I just wanted to be with him. And now that I have that veil taken off, I'm dealing with a lot of trauma and I know you hate me and I know you don't believe me, but I am. I deal with a lot of trauma about what happened. If someone goes to put, lovingly put their hand on my face, I flinch. But everything he did to her in that video, I can't, I don't like watching that video because he did the same to me. His, the way his face turned, the way he snorted and growled. He flicked, started by flicking his cigarette at me. He burnt cigarettes on me, threw, threw things at me, punched me, smacked me, called me names. And the, the worst thing is, he, he blamed it. He would blame it on me for what he did. And I would be like, oh yeah, I must have done something. Okay, he's not going to say sorry, so I'm just going to suck it up. Like, what kind of self-worth did I have? None. All of the signs I ignored, I see them now. The late at night, uh, hiding the phone, talking on the phone with like, oh my gosh, I don't even know how many. Keeping, keeping all of the disgusting videos of other women because he would say that in case he wanted to use them to bribe them in the future. Um, ignored that. I told him to delete them, but you can't tell him what to do. Yeah, he has a lot of videos of me and he'll keep them forever. I can only imagine what Dee Dee's living through. She, you can come online and you can act, put on a face all you want, try to save his reputation. I tried to do that too. You guys know I did. How many times did I try to come on there and say, well, he's not really not that bad. He's that bad. And then he's literally evil, evil, personified. Yup. And then Mr. Cardigan, um, says I just wanted sympathy when I would go over my breakup story <laughs> with uh, BB. Oh, really? So those, you know, those tears were just fake, I guess. And then play a, a part back to where I said, you know, if we ever had to break up because we don't want, he does, he wants kids and I don't, then that will happen. doesn't mean that I'm not going to be hurt that I had to break up with him. Like, what the heck? And actually, we didn't break up because of anything child related. Like I said, he never brought up breaking up. I brought it up a few times. I wasn't happy. He was always ignoring me, gaming, watching TV. He was just like, he, you know, like, it hurt because it was like something familiar that I had to end for seven years, but I wasn't happy anymore. I wasn't in love with him anymore. I wasn't happy. Um, I wasn't satisfied. So that's why I tell you, if I'm not satisfied in a relationship and I'm not happy, you're probably going to know. 
Another thing I want to bring up is people like to quote when I said, I think it was in Cuba Rage, I'm going to uh, manipulate you and you're going to eat it up. I was quoting a hater in chat. Somebody um, in chat would always say she's going to manipulate us because, you know, whatever. So I would say that um, I was quoting exactly what they said. I don't know how I would manipulate people. I always was genuine about how I'm feeling, whether I was on a diet, not on a diet. I guess if you you could count, if you, you know, at the time I would say, okay, let's start a health journey, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, those were my true intentions at the time. I didn't have an intention of turning and making people like, you know, using their emotions. Like you don't know me in real life. I'm actually really nice and personable and I've had a lot of friends. I'm gonna prove her subs are fake. Prove it, how? How are you gonna prove that? Because my channel grew so fast? It's even an enigma to me. I have no idea. But I did message YouTube about it because I was concerned. Because I'm not into buying subscribers. It's not, I don't want to do that. I know it's not right to do it. I know that it can get your channel taken down. How do I mentally handle it? I'm resilient. I don't, I don't place my self-worth in the words of other people, you know? So what? I did weird things in my past when I was drinking and partying. And who doesn't do things like this? I cheated on Pete's and like, it was like, what, 17 years ago? I would never cheat on somebody now because I learned my lesson from it. That's what I'm saying. I might not even be able to get a plaque. I, I whatever, you know, it's not going to ruin my life. I never dwell on things. What photo was Photoshopped? I have never in my life ever had Photoshop. Never, 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 never. Voila. I swear. You can say you can change your name, but you're not, you're the same person. How am I the same person? How? I know people think I'm just, it's like they think I'm still that person. I'm still a foodie and I'm still, I'm going to go back to that. And it's not going to happen. I can assure you, I'm really liking the person I'm on the road to be. I'm smoking shisha, which she's over there, doesn't even, like it, vapor, it vaporates. It's gone once you smoke it. There's no smoke in the air. You walk in here, you don't smell anything. So it's not the same. But you know who smokes around their pets? Chain smokes? Yes, yours truly. Kenzie, because our relationship is a lot more than what just happened, you know? And as somebody who has cheated in the past, I understand a little bit. And I evaluated our relationship on a lot more than just that, you know? So, well, being drunk and stupid is an excuse. A lot of people do stupid things. I never asked people for 800 subs. I said, sub for sub, that I, I said that I had 800 left. We were talking about that. Big deal. So what? So what? I'm going to be villainized now for that? Trying to support other channels and have them support me, a newer audience, instead of the vile haters all the time? when go cry about it i don't care thanks for the money yeah hungry fat chick why it's so interesting to for people to be discussed when they have eating disorders and issues it's obvious we know we know that stuffing our face is not healthy we don't do it because we love being super fat like you know like i'm just tired of people beating up over the same overweight people over and over like used as a hate tactic it's just ridiculous and it is ridiculous i defend myself at all i don't know why i bother but look at amber lynn she never defends herself and she's still people just believe all the crap you know I feel like, I don't know, pointing out the hypocrisy once in a while. I don't know. I mean, the past uh, seven years ago, 17 years ago, 20, if I cheated on someone 20 years ago, that doesn't matter today at all. I've made peace with myself and with that person. You know what the difference is? Candy doesn't rage. She doesn't dig into it. She doesn't, you know what I mean? I defend myself. Yeah, sure. Why am I going to apologize for crapping over someone's bathroom, Fifty Shades of Beige? Why? Like, you can't use somebody's past against them when they're a different person today. I'm not raging. I'm addressing it. I'm not embarrassed. I never get embarrassed AF. Trust. Oh, I did the Nazi. Get out of here, please. Bye. Bye. She is in a unique situation where there are a lot of channels that talk about her. A lot of that is because she is so reactionary, is easily triggered, and keeps raging when she says she's not going to anymore. All she's doing here is basically promoting that Mr. Snowflake documentary. She could have waited until she was calm and then said something like, this documentary is boring and old news and not say anything else about it. I haven't watched it and don't really care to because unfortunately I've seen just about every video Chantal has ever made. I spent hours editing her. No offense, I can just only take so much Chantal. I also thought it was weird how she mentioned multiple times that she checked Salah's bank statements to see if he bought subscribers. Just seems like a weird thing to do. It's like she's overcompensating for the whole subscriber thing. My guess is that no, she didn't buy subscribers, but definitely participated in the sub for sub thing and is trying to deflect. She says she doesn't manipulate people, but when she talks about how people just hate her for her eating disorder, that's not true and that's being manipulative by trying to get sympathy. She talks about how she was blindsided by Nader, and don't get me wrong, he's an absolute scumbag and what he did to her was wrong and I'm not blaming her for it. 
but she did see the signs even on the first date. They did hard drugs on her first date. She said how crazy he was, and she also knew about the other women from the beginning, too. If Nader wanted to be with her, I think she'd still be with him and still defending his behavior, like with the May situation. She talks about how she cheated on Bibi and broke up with him because she wasn't getting enough attention. He would ignore her and play video games. Well, that's a really immature reason to break up with someone, and there's no excuse for cheating. Funny how she defends Salah's cheating because she, quote, understands. The reason why no one believes she has changed is because all the things she has changed about herself are superficial. She moved to a different country, dresses differently, and has to act in a more conservative manner, but nothing has truly changed. She just wants to make herself look good. Anyway, on to the next part where Pete spills the beans about Chantel's visa. 360 LB, losing it, ain't a breeze. I do miss her. The plane fare is expensive, though. So, I mean, like, it's she can't really afford to... Yeah, she needs to save up more money before she can visit again. Not something where she can pop over to Canada every few months. Every three months, you have to travel for a trip. Oh, well, that, um, like, she's just, like, hopping, hopping to another country, from what I understand. Like, when she was here... When she was here, she, there was, like, a, you know, one time we hung out, she also, you know, stopped in at my mom's and... She explained to my mom that like she pops over to uh, Saudi Arabia, but basically she just pops across the border for a couple days while her visa was uh, while her visa renews. But there are some things I would like to address. I would like to have a serious answer. I would like to know for real, seriously. I would like to know from reaction channels that make such a big or people who follow them. I want to know seriously. I'm not raging. I want to know on a serious, calm level. What gives you the right to be invasive and know my visa status? Number one question for you. Number two, how does this affect your life in any way? Number three, when did reacting become, it went from reacting to videos to being invasive in my personal life? I'd like to know that. On a serious level, I would like to know that in, in your next videos because there's this drama going around that Pete's apparently said some things, probably not realizing that it was a big deal. You know, he probably didn't think, oh, so people are gonna talk about this, like her visa, who cares, you know? So I just wanna clear some things up. Number one, I'm not mad at Pete's and I'll never be mad at Pete's, so. So basically for those of you who are new and don't know who Pete's is, he was, well, my former roommate, but he's been a friend, like a best friend for like probably I don't know how many years now, but since like high school, okay? That won't change. And people like to divert your signal. Well, as a Muslim woman, you're not allowed to have friends. Maybe that's true, that's not your business. He also apparently said, so apparently he said when I was down in Canada, I visited his mom and uh, was talking about, you know, how I would border hop. I'm not, I can't afford to come to Canada because plane tickets are expensive, all right? As for the plane, plane fare, yeah, it's expensive. It's even more than he said, usually because I usually go last minute, like I book my plane ticket last minute, so it's always more. So it's expensive. It's expensive to go travel to Canada. It's a, a very expensive plane ticket. It's not something I even like, technically, yeah, I could pay for it or he could pay for it or we could pay for it, whatever, it's no one's business. Technically a ticket could be bought, but then like we have bills. Like I have a lot of debts I have to deal with from Canada. Um, we have our bills here, you know, and we are planning for other travel. And so for me to just go to Canada, like for no reason, like even a couple of times a year, it is expensive. And I have been doing it, you know, I've been going, but so he's technically right. The airfare is expensive and he's probably just assuming, you know, <laughs> because I never was rich or anything and I'm not rich. I don't see what the T in is that like, what's the T? Oh no, she can't afford a plane ticket to Canada. If I need to go to Canada, I'll get there. Don't worry about it. So he's right about that. It is expensive to go to Canada. It's not cheap. As for the border hopping at one point. Yeah. Number one, I'm not going to talk about my visa status. I'm not going to confirm or deny anything because literally it's no one's business. I don't know where the one up is and saying, oh yeah, we were right. Who cares? Even if it was true, who cares what visa I'm on here? You can't just come here at first. Yeah. It was a tourist visa and I would border hop somewhere sometimes. Yes, of course. So what, what's your point? I don't know what, like, can you please tell me what the T is? You don't just come here and get a visa. It's hard. They've changed the rules a lot. You don't know what my visa status is now. Even Pete's doesn't know because I haven't told him anything in a while. I used to border hop. Yes. Now, I'm not telling you. For example, they've recently changed the rules where you can have a family visa here now. Like somebody, it depends on a lot of things. You have to have a certain amount of money and all this and that. Not, an, not like an unreasonable amount, but there's like criteria. And then, and Salah fits the criteria. So 
I'm just saying, like, they've changed things for family visas. I'm not saying that's what I'm doing. I'm not saying it's not what I'm doing. I'm not telling you on purpose. Like, I don't want that privacy, uh, private information to be told for people to exploit it for views because they have nothing. All right. They're literally desperate, low to the point where they have nothing else that they have to make tea out of what my visa status is in a country as if that has any true meaning to their life, like whatsoever. I don't say I lied because I purposely was vague and I would say yes, no, yes, no on purpose because it's not anyone's business. I don't want to know what it is because again, it's my life. It's my business, not yours. The need to have all of this information about my private life is insanely invasive and insanely pathetic for content. People don't understand why I hide my status because Stephanie, it's no one's business. And you are actually going to say why people are, why I keep these things private. Have you seen people call, say they're going to call the Kuwait authorities. People say they're going to show up at the airport. People looking up my tickets when I'm going on a flight, people showing up, people go real life on me all the time, Stephanie. So I'm trying to protect myself and my privacy. I don't need people knowing all my business. Just like I don't show people, um, my uh, marriage certificate, like, no, 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 no. And of, of course, Kuwait authorities are going to think that these people are just Islamophobic and stupid, which they are, and probably hang up on them, which they should. I know, Stephanie, yeah, it's illegal. I mean, that's the thing. But I'm keeping it private because it's a part of my life I want to keep private. I, sh I don't even have to explain beyond that why, you know? It should just be left at that. Okay, she doesn't want to talk about it. I mean, I don't know. Like, it's not something I want to talk about. I'm not saying, I'm saying that there are a lot of Islamophobic people who make a lot of comments. So like the Mahari Ham and all that stuff and saying I'm going to be, I'm obsessed with plane crashes because I'm going to be a bomber and stuff like that. Yeah, I think it's just more prudent to be very secretive about things like this. And I'm not going to turn against Pete. He's not going to turn against me. You can keep trying. It's not going to happen. That's okay, Jim. I'm getting content on it also. If I don't talk about it, Jimmy, they're going to get content out of anything. So it doesn't matter at this point. Yeah, of course it bothers me that people invade my privacy. And... And whenever I was telling Pete's mom that, it, it meant when I was doing that. At one point, I was. Yeah, so it's no secret. By the way, you have to also leave the country to come back in with a new status. Oh, but you're a public figure. Oh, okay, that makes it all much better. I'm just a YouTuber with 100k subscribers. I'm not a friggin' huge celebrity. Um, Sal Salah is not Kuwaiti. Um, he's also an expat. But they have opened up family visas now. Yeah, it just depends. They're always changing the rules. It's not easy. No. And that's the thing. People talk a lot about something they don't know about, you know? If people ask me, are you a tourist? What's your visa status? Why should I tell them if I don't want to? Glad you haven't let anything drive a wedge between you and Pete. No, it's not going to happen. I just told him, like, I'm sure you didn't mean anything by it, but just don't ever, like, talk about me at all, period, you know? And I'm sure he'll be okay with that. He usually doesn't. I'm sure he just was talking and not realizing. You know what? People bait him very hard. They bait him for information about me. I see it sometimes in his chats. Like, you know, it's pretty pretty this way, like. So, whatever. <laughs> oh, hi, Tavi. <laughs> Thank you for watching me. How does all what work? Hi, banana. Sorry guys, being gross, whatever. <laughs> um, once person changes, not another person's concern. People should be adult enough to respect it. Yeah, exactly. Her nails overgrowing while I was away and then me going to deal with it when I got back is not animal abuse, idiot. Okay, the tea with Takats, it's actually very shameful that people have the nerve to go into her chat and say that this um, YouTuber is problematic. Why would I be problematic when you are the ones reporting her? I did nothing to her channel. So how is it me that's the problem? Idiots, that's what. So anyways, that's fine, whatever. I mean, you're not going to affect me. It's not my channel. I don't care. If I was just going to these people just for subs, like not just, I, want, I wanted to support and try to get support from a different community than just these vultures. I'm sorry. Anyway, some of these people have five people in their chat at one time. Um, some people have, that's fine. She can curse me. I don't give a crap. Some people have... Um, at the most 20, 30, that's it. Okay. So it's no scandal. I didn't get all these subs from that sub for sub. There's no way because I've grown almost 2000 subs. So yeah. And they have the nerve to go warn her about me. I did nothing but try to promote her channel and support her as a small channel. They're the ones who are going there saying reported you, you're supporting uh, uh foodie beauty or your report, you're supporting everyday Miriam, but they're the ones reporting her. Like they're so like mental, like there's no other word for it. 
whatever. <laughs> they think that's going to affect me. Doesn't affect my channel at all. Did it affect my channel in any way? No, I don't even know this person. So they're mad at me. And okay, you're not going to get to me. You can just get a life and give up now because it's not going to happen no matter what you do. No matter what you do, even if you kill me, I believe in God. Good. It's, it's my time. It's my time. I don't care. I don't know this person, Brenda. Why do I care? <laughs> that's on her. Whatever. Who cares? I'm just sassy. Not bothered. He was talking to eight people. Yeah, he does. Well, yeah, I mean, like, you know, I feel sad about that because his audience has gone down a lot, like since we weren't living together. But even mine has, you know, like if that's the price I have to pay for no drama and not having these leeches. Like I said, yeah, there's 5000 people in uh, the witches chat. There's 5000 people in Cardi anywhere that there's drama about me and people can go and freely hate on me. There's going to be views, but I would rather have none of those people in my life. They're toxic. They're disgusting. They're Islamophobic. They're fat shamers. They're vile. They say the most disgusting things. Why would I want that in my chat just for views and money? Like, there's no way. You know, money can always be made another way. Peace just doesn't feel the need to lie about stuff that doesn't need. Exactly, Diamond. That's what I said. He probably didn't feel like it was a big deal. But I, I, I just gently remind him that I have vultures following me around. Look, she hides behind a British accent, but she's sneakily the most nasty reactor. <laughs> yeah, she's something else. Exactly. She sits there like this, like... <laughs> My god, she's leaning on the fridge. <laughs> and... Oh, and by the way, one more thing about the Takat thing, okay? Don't come in here and act surprised that they're cursing me out or they're mad at me. I don't know if it's true. If it is, don't be surprised because you're the ones who went into her chat reporting her and instigating it. You wanted this reaction. You wanted these people to turn against me because you don't want me to have any supporters, which is just ridiculous. No, I'm not getting uh, wrinkles. And even if I do get wrinkles, Savannah, that's okay. They're trying to hurt other creators who support me, but really it has no effect on my life. Like I said, like even if that one person doesn't support me, it doesn't matter. They had like maybe 10 people in their chat, 20 people at the most. Doesn't affect my life. Doesn't affect my life. And I wasn't after their subscribers, their 20 subscribers, okay? Like, whatever. Like, yeah, I'm looking for different support from different people. Can you blame me? Look at this. Look how crappy Gore World is. It's a disease. The Turkish guy was not a prostitute. He was a young guy who just came to Canada and he was very broke and he didn't even ask me for money. I offered. I've helped a lot of, yeah, I've, you know, I've, yeah, you know, laptop, all this other crap. I was just really dumb. Especially in Cuba, though. I mean, these people work like slaves. It's like modern slavery. They work so hard and they don't get hardly any pay, you know? So part of me obviously felt bad for that. And here I am making like so much money a month off of being ridiculous. Like, what do I care? Like, just, like literally things are just, just things to me. I don't care at all. They don't have any value to me, really. Yeah, I think he gave it to his little son. He had a kid, like a young kid who needed like some something like we could have really used it for school dude who was also running of course they're running their mouth look he gets what 500 views talking about me and the disgusting pig hanzira no hanzira sorry he's male haiwan puts my dis my pictures um in his uh, thumbnail disgusting i reported him and without talking about me they get what collectively 150 views why don't you just give up and get off the internet you're also a disease if I were you, I'd be embarrassed. And I would, if I, if I ever get that many views, yeah, I'm gone. Bye. Take the hint. No one wants you on this platform. You're a meth smoking abuser and doo doo running your mouth. Pff, I don't even care what you think. They had seven viewers. Stop it. I love that the most. So they're judging what you have to do to live there and you want where you want to live. How ridiculous. Many people have to use visa hopping to live in their desired location. Exactly. I'm a Canadian citizen, you know, um, even you can keep dual residency in Canada. You can be a resident of two countries. Like, you know, so <laughs> what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is that you lie about it. So what? It's not your business. If I want to be vague, if I want to change things, if I want to say something to mislead you, that's not your business, especially. And I've even said that, you know, so anyway, you, you Googled the rules about marriage. They're not on there. It didn't apply to us. We appealed to the court and went a different way. So you don't know anything. You don't know anything. You can rage all you want. How about you focus on your own life? How about that? Milk tea. She's not married at all. Look at the rules. <laughs> you could technically use the drain if you wanted to. No, only for pee. I don't know how, how people still use toilet paper. But for example, not to be gross, but take some peanut butter and rub it on your hand. Try to wipe it with tissue and then try to wash it off. You know? Yo mama. Thanks for the super chat. Leave Breezen alone. She had a stroke and crowd it, crawled nine miles, crawled nine miles. She is a survivor. She woke up in the hospital thinking she was at Disney. Goofy was her doctor. Thank you very much, yo mama, and happy belated birthday. Hi, babe. Are you coming to say hi? Or are you going to say hi in the chat? 
But you have to come from your apartment, so when are you coming? <laughs> What's going on, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Beezers. <laughs> hey, babe. Oh, he stole one of my socks. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> he was playing with the princess here. Was he? She's yeah. knocked down. Can you, uh, there's, she not look at the bread on the ground. <laughs> you see it? What? The bag of bread, it's in a bag. Whoa, really? Yeah. She it? grabbed the whole bag and she went on the floor. This is our family. <laughs> Julia, Howie. <laughs> Julia's like, whoa. <laughs> hey, babe. She's looking for a uh, Howie Machboos. Look at his foot. Harry Machboos. You can Google all you want. Like I said, with our marriage, our situation wasn't on Google, so good luck. I don't care about her visa. I just don't understand why she can tell the world about her six gonorrhea. But the visa is a big secret. It's also strange that she has some mysterious marriage situation that can't be Googled. That doesn't sound suspicious at all. Did you catch the part where she tells on herself and says she didn't get that many subscribers from the sub for sub? Let's see that again. If I was just going to these people just for subs, like not just, I, want, I wanted to support and try to get support from a different community than just these vultures. I'm sorry. Anyway, some of these people have five people in their chat at one time. Um, some people have, that's fine. She can curse me. I don't give a crap. Some people have um, at the most 20, 30. That's it. Okay. So it's no scandal. I didn't get all these subs from that sub for sub. There's no way because I've grown almost 2000 subs. I didn't get all these subs from that sub for sub. There's no way. Her own words. Speaking of subscribers. Call yourself a hater, but now you're a fan. Right now, Chantelle is rapidly losing subscribers. Rose Thorne reacts to a stream where she went to socialcounts.org, which shows subscriber numbers in real time. Towards the end of the stream, Chantelle's numbers dipped all the way down to 98,999. I'll put that stream in the description. Gee, I wonder if that has anything to do with the way Chantel was speaking about Takat, saying that Takat getting harassed isn't Chantel's problem, and it doesn't affect her, therefore she doesn't care, and it doesn't bother her. Chantel isn't responsible for Takat being harassed, but I'm sure a little empathy would have gone a long way. She made a couple tedious community tab posts about her sub count. The first one says, Hello there, so just as I suspected would happen, I am losing subscribers quickly. Last week, when they started going up rapidly for no reason, I became concerned that someone had bought me subs. I checked Salah's bank statements, and it was not him, and it was not me. Believe it or not, whatever, makes no difference to the truth. I believe that someone bought them so that I would get excited about reaching 100k, and then knowing the subs would drop again, get content out of that. They wanted me to celebrate and then watch me cry as I lost the subs. But I'm not dumb, and that's why I haven't celebrated anything, lol. There are people who have done more sick and twisted things to me on the internet, and I have learned that there is nothing impossible regarding the lengths they will go to to make content and drama. They expect a seething rage and breakdown. Well, this is why I will not celebrate 100k until I've had them for at least a few months. They can also now make content from this, claiming I am blaming trolls for buying subs when it was me. Nope. I'm also not that dumb. I know it's against TOS, which is why I messaged YouTube when the subs were going up super fast. They said if the subs were bots, they would be removed by YouTube, which is clearly happening now. I do have a few new real subs, so to those, welcome. I appreciate you. If I could, I would hide my sub count, but YouTube has taken that feature away, so go ahead and make content off my sub count, since once again, y'all have nothing else. I'll be happy with 50k or 15k. I don't care. I don't get paid for subs. As for this sub for sub thing, I was trying to also support smaller channels and channels from a different group than this toxic pile of dung that is Girl World. Can you blame me? I watch and like the content of those I sub to from that stream. Anyway, I gained a few subs from that, nothing more, and since you weirdos harass these people, they probably already unsubbed. Happy? Sad if you are, but whatever, I am beyond caring. I realized that I had 98k subs. That's more than some will ever have, and I am grateful especially more than most reaction channels who only have subs or views because they steal my content and ride my coattails. So thank you. See you guys later. Yeah, she seems like she doesn't care. The second post says, all right, so I couldn't find the conversation copy in my email. Maybe I forgot to request it. I don't know what happened. So I just contacted YouTube creator help and they confirmed that I did reach out to them concerned that someone maybe bought me subs the minute I saw my subs going up rapidly. Why would I tell on myself if it was me? Anyway, here is the recent conversation with YouTube regarding this matter. In the original convo, they told me it was not possible to buy subs, which we all know does happen, 
and that even if they were bots, YouTube would remove them. So that's the whole story. Hope whoever is responsible got the entertainment they wanted, lol. Cool story, bro. Now moving on. By the way, it says Foodie Beauty because I have not yet changed my Google name, only the name on YouTube. And then she included two screenshots of the conversation between her and YouTube. But it's basically just asking for the old conversation, which they said they can't give her. I don't really know what the point of this was. I make sick beats. People make fun of my feet. You ain't nothing but a hound dog crying all the time. You ain't nothing but a hound dog crying all the time. Chantal also did really two boring and pointless live streams earlier. She didn't say anything that she didn't already repeat a hundred times in the other recent streams. There wasn't even anything worth clipping. Her most recent stream was exceptionally boring. She said she was going to react to reactors, but she just did what she did before and played one of Yo Mama's streams and barely said anything. It was pure torture. I think it could be a little more entertaining if she would respond to French Fried Girl directly. She also did a couple gaming streams on Twitch. I just kind of scrolled through those and found this part where she almost gave herself a heart attack. So dramatic. Anyway, that's all I've got for now. Let me know your thoughts and thanks for watching. All right. Toodaloo, folks. <laughs>